When you think about death in video games, you probably imagine something like this. Or this. Or even this. But you probably don't envision this. Mm -hmm. Death in video games is often just a quick blip, a short-lived failure preceding success, and rarely does it ever carry true meaning. Dying in a video game will usually only cost you some time as you work your way back to the point of failure, and even when games do punish demise, it usually just results in stripped-down mechanics or a loss of currency. There's nothing that really calls out to our humanity, but instead we just receive these arbitrary punishments within the mechanics of the gameplay. Some games do go as far to create narrative justifications for your ability to respawn, but even in these titles, dying is just another small hiccup on the road to success. Just like in our everyday lives, Games don't typically spend a lot of time creating discussions or impactful moments on the topic of death. Discussing death often makes people feel uncomfortable, and even just thinking about it for too long can make us anxious. We'd much rather put that facet of humanity to the back of our minds while we carry on throughout our everyday lives. We recognize that death is coming for all of us and we spend our lives trying to make meaningful memories and find our purpose, all while doing our best to forget that life will end. This uneasiness around the topic of death is one reason why I think many game developers don't hang on that subject matter for too long. And that's what makes Spiritfarer such a different breed of game. Spiritfarer recognizes the anxious relationship that humans have with their own mortality and sets out to comfort our troubled minds by showing many different perspectives on death while making sure that all of them are at least life-affirming. So a few years ago, I played What Remains of Edith Finch for the first time, and was quickly intrigued by how the narrative focused on people trying to live while being surrounded and consumed by death. The framing of that title story is what makes it one of the greatest stories in games, and Spiritfarer is the first title I've experienced since that reminds me of it. Here though, the viewpoints are actually flipped. Edith Finch frames life through death's eyes, while Spiritfarer contextualizes death within the joys of life. Never before have I played a game that handles the conversation of death with such confidence, nuance, and dignity. It doesn't try to come up with some philosophical reasoning or a be-all, end-all point to ease our fear of death, but instead it delivers to us a multitude of outlooks on what death means as it relates to life. It's able to convey these perspectives on dying using a three-step process 
to ensure that the impact is felt by the player and gives them plenty to chew on long after their play session ends. Before we look at those three steps, I first want to give a little context for how Spiritfarer is structured. Thunder Lotus's newest game is a management-based one where the player assumes the role of Stella, the new Spiritfarer who is responsible for easing the souls of the deceased so that they can move on to the afterlife in peace. In order to accomplish this goal, Stella must forge meaningful relationships with the spirits that board her ship by granting them their final wishes and also making sure that their basic needs are met, including feeding them, housing them, and of course, hugging them. This will involve a lot of hustle and bustle on the player's end as they're constantly juggling the requests and needs of each spirit while also improving their ship and rearranging its buildings. In a simple kind of way, it mirrors the busyness of everyday life, and it can see the player getting wrapped up in tasks, so much so that an entire day passes in the blink of an eye. The pace never gets out of hand though. Things never cross from being too busy to too stressful, which is critical for maintaining the relaxing tranquility that the game attempts to bring to the subject of death. And when a spirit's requests have all been fulfilled, Stella takes them to the Everdor, where they pass over into the great beyond. So with that, let's take a look at the three-step process that Spiritfarer uses to depict death differently. The first step is making the player care. This ensures that they can be made susceptible to the lessons and viewpoints that are shared throughout the game. If we don't give a crap about the characters, then their deaths won't really mean that much. This is where the bulk of the gameplay comes into play, as we grow closer and fonder of these characters by helping them with their final requests. Each character has a personality wholly their own that makes each of them feel unique and distinct from one another. They all come from different backgrounds, professions, and life experiences that makes each of them their own person. And have no doubt, while they may look like animals, they are indeed people. Take Atoll for example. A man with a loving family, a hungry belly, and a drive to help those less fortunate than himself. Or Alice, an elderly woman whose mind is slowly deteriorating due to a tragic mental illness. Or even Gustave, a former museum curator who views life as ultimately meaningless outside of the art we leave behind. Each of them and the rest of the cast brings their own gusto and attitude to the ship, and they don't always get along with one another. Giovanni and Astrid are lovers who often quarrel, leaving Stella in position to clean up the mess. And nobody really seems to enjoy Atoll's morning job as he works to repair buildings all over the ship. And things like this have a real impact on their moods, making Stella's job all that much harder. When Stella isn't trying to quell disruptions or keep everyone fed, she's often learning about each of the spirits, including their upbringing, their jobs, their hobbies, their love lives, and more. The player gets these small snippets into the world of these characters and it's through this lens that they are able to understand and accept each person. Each spirit also gets a handful of quests that show how they're handling the reality of their death, and it's here where you really begin to sympathize with each of them. Now, that's not to say that all of them are strictly good and friendly people. It's quite the opposite in some cases, but by the time you say goodbye to them, you reach a point where you can at least understand them, if not truly care about them. It's during this first step where passengers often allude to their perspectives on death. Some are scared of it, some welcome it, and some try to avoid it. But once each passenger has had all their needs met, 
they reach a point of acceptance and inform Stella that they're ready to pass away and ask you to take them to the Everdor, a location where the afterlife begins. As you reach the Everdor, the second and most impactful of the three-step model kicks into gear. With everything settled, it's time to share one final moment together. Again, these moments only work if you've invested time, energy, and love into the characters you sail with. I mean, unnarrated dialogue really won't do much for you, unless you've come to view the characters as people, and this game does that in strides using its first step. This second step is about hearing what these folks have to say as they come face to face with death. It's here where the game delivers its multitude of perspectives on death and the afterlife, and leaves the player with a bunch of notions to ponder on the nature of dying. These moments are special, and they need to be experienced firsthand to truly feel their impact. Every player is going to react differently to the passing of each spirit and their final message, given their own life experiences and perspectives on death. But with that being said, I'm going to share a few of their final thoughts. Astrid just feels tired and is ready to move on. She's lived a long life full of pain and suffering, but by all accounts, she was one of those people that everyone seemed to love. She's able to accept that her time is up and she welcomes that and it feels like a real perspective for someone who has lived long in life and is just ready to move on. Gustav is indifferent to death, as he views the world as just an assortment of atoms, and therefore nothing really carries any true meaning. He goes on to say, though, that humans are able to create and interpret meaning for themselves, and even though we may pass, the things we create can live on for future generations to see and learn from. Gustav doesn't fear death, he just views it as an unavoidable reality of existence. Summer comes to accept that she did her best to live her life to the fullest after her partner died, but that she was never able to truly overcome all of her grief. She praises Stella for being a caring soul and for helping her through all of this, and you get a real sense of how impactful the spirit fairer was for helping her find peace with her past. And finally, Atoll just straight up disappears one day. You don't get a goodbye, you don't get words of wisdom, you just realize he's gone and it really depicts the horror of losing someone unexpectedly. None of these goodbyes are extremely profound or pretentious moments that contextualize death perfectly, but instead they offer comfort in so much so that we realize we're not alone in facing death's looming aura. And at the same time, the characters stay true to who they are and they speak from the heart honestly about their thoughts on dying, whether it brings them fear or relief. We can meet them halfway because of this and begin to frame our own thoughts on our own mortality. And the beauty of these moments are that they are drawn out. They force the player to take in the severity and the beauty of the moment as the spirits say their final words. When so many games are content on making deaths quick and respawns fast, Spiritfarer deliberately takes its time when a character dies, and it carries so much more weight because of it. And then there's the third step, setting reminders of spirits past. One of the most wholesome touches about death in Spiritfarer is that you feel the absence of each character once they've departed, but you can still find little reminders of them to ensure yourself that they never are truly gone. You can't destroy a spirit's home once it's built, 
meaning you'll always have a physical reminder of the spirit on the ship with you. Nature will begin to retake their homes as flowers bloom, but they can never be fully reclaimed. And each time you pass by an area that includes a minigame that's linked to a departed character, you will have to visit their home to start it up or pass by it, which can remind you of them. The passing of a spirit also results in a new constellation dotting the night sky, and these remain visible for the remainder of your journey. I took a lot of time to just look up at the night sky and reflect on what each spirit said to me in their final moments. And finally, if you visit the Everdoor after receiving the final request, you can reunite with each spirit in their ghostly form and give them one last hug before wrapping up the game. It's a beautiful reminder that even when we pass, our legacy and the people we impacted live on. We are never truly gone, and our footprints in people's lives will remain. This three-step model is how Spiritfarer depicts death differently, and it's executed wonderfully throughout the game. By making us first care for the characters, and then bearing witness to their final moments and thoughts, and then reminding us of them for the rest of the game, Spiritfarer depicts death differently than any game I've ever played. Never could I have imagined that a game focused on death could be so cheerful, delightful, life-affirming, and thought-provoking. Yet, here we are. If you're someone who thinks about death often, or has been adversely affected by it throughout your life, then you're going to make a real connection with Spiritfarer. It touches on all matters of demise. Suicide, natural death, sudden passings, and even the death of youngsters. It's all here, waiting to break your heart, and teach you something about death simply by having characters that we care for share their thoughts on it. No one has all the answers, but Spiritfarer teaches us that discussing death doesn't have to be taboo. In fact, it can be cathartic in a way as it may ease our worries and anxieties. Death gives life meaning, and that's the main takeaway from Spiritfarer. No matter what your perspective is on dying, you can't outrun death's door knock. And so, why not make the most of the time that we have? Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing for more. Follow me on Twitter at NopeNapNarp. And oh yeah, go play Spiritfarer. It's kind of a good game. And as always, have a nice day and take care.